Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about Arc Nova. But before we do, we just want to remind you to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. Okay, so Arc Nova is designed by my Teus Wig. It's published by Capstone Games and Fjordland Games. All right, so this game, what you are doing is you are building a zoo. You're all trying to build these competing zoos. Uh, but what do zoos want to do? Two things. First of all, they want to draw people in, right? They want to get as many attractions as possible so they can lure in as many people who are going to buy tickets, but also most zoos have some kind of a conservation effort behind them as well. So you're going to want to do those, both those things. You want to build an awesome zoo that people are going to want to visit, but also you want to donate to the various conservation causes. It has a kind of a clever scoring mechanism where the more you do of both of those things, uh, the closer you are to winning. Let me give you a quick overview of how to play. There's a lot going on here, so I'm not going to give you the full teach, but yeah, let me just give you an overview of how the game works. All right, here is our main player board. This is a super long, skinny board. Along the middle there, we have kind of a track of cards, as well as a huge stack of cards over here. Throughout the game, we're gonna be drafting cards, both from the lineup, as well as from the stack. They're kinda of gonna shuffle through. They're kinda of gonna cycle up, cycle up front. The top two cards every round are gonna be discarded. And they're gonna be replaced over here to the discard pile. And everything's gonna slide down and refill that lineup. Around the perimeter of the board, we have actually two different victory point tracks. One has to do with conservation. That's kind of the inner green track. It's a little bit larger. Each one of those is worth kind of a lot of impact. Where we also have the smaller attraction points over here on the bottom. Those look like little tickets. So we call those kind of tickets as we're playing the game. The tickets have to do with uh, attracting animals and customers to your zoo. So we have the green victory point over here. It's going to start over here. It's going to go clockwise. And then we have the tickets over here that are going to go counterclockwise. Eventually, wherever they meet up, that's going to trigger the end of the game. And whoever's able to overlap those two victory point conditions by the most margin is going to be declared the winner. As you progress along the track over here, on the green track, you're going to get certain abilities. Maybe you'll be able to upgrade your cards and your actions. Maybe you get some money. Maybe you get some extra resources. Also, you're going to have to eventually choose some victory point cards. And you have to narrow down which ones you want to keep until the end of the game. As we take our various actions, some of them are going to require us to move up on this track right here. As we call it, the coffee breaks. It's a little coffee mug as the tracker. Once that coffee mug gets all the way to the top of the track, this is going to trend, trigger an end of a round scenario where we kind of go through these various stages. We're going to reset some things, perhaps discard some cards, and take some income. And after that, it's going to reset at the bottom of the track. This little board right here is some extra actions that we're going to be able to take later on in the game. Basically, these are different zoos that we can partner with. We can partner with zoos from all over the world. This can make some of our actions even stronger. We also have these little kind of uh, caps over here, <laughs> these little graduation caps. Basically, that's kind of a knowledge track. On the main player board, the further down you are on the knowledge track, the more cards you're going to have access to, the more variety of things you'll be able to draw. You also have some ability to add some more research and, and some things onto your board over there. And then on this very far side over here, this is a very important uh, action that you're going to be able to take, but it's a very difficult action to take. When you do that, you're basically going to donate to some kind of conservation cause. So across the bottom here, we have some starting ones that the game has, but also throughout the deck as well, we're going to be introduced to some various cards that allow us to do even more additional conservation efforts. That's going to be largely those green shield points that we talked about earlier. All right, here is our individual player board. This is our zoo. This is where all of our animals are going to be placed. We have all these great tiles. There's two whole trays full of these great tiles that basically represent the pens that we're going to be keeping all of our animals in. These uh, trays also track, keep track of all the money, all the buildings that we can build. All those kinds of tokens, they're all stored in those trays. The actions that we can take are all along the bottom of our board here. Those are five different cards, and there's five different actions that you can take. The strength of the action is across the top here. So right now, for instance, the build action we have on our far right can be at a strength of five, whereas our association track is at a four right now. When we take an action, we do whatever it says. If we want to do the build action, it says build one building with a maximum size of X, which refers to the strength of the action, in this case five, pay $2 per space. So we've got 10 bucks, we've got a five space, we've got the card on the five, let's go ahead and do all that. On our board itself, when we cover up anything, we would take whatever that is. So in this case, if we were to build this right here, we would cover up that five. So we'd have to pay 10, but we would get back five. Once you're done with an action, what you're going to do is you're going to slide it down, slide everything over, and put that card in the one position. You can take any action at any one of the positions. However, you sometimes you want to wait until it gets a little bit higher up on the track so you can take a stronger version of the action. These tokens right here allow you to basically modify what your level is. So for instance, if you really wanted to do a level 5 build, but the build card is at the 4 position, you could spend one of these tokens in order to do a 5 build, even though it's only in the 4 position. 
So you can build, you can place animals into your zoo, you can draw cards, which are gonna give you things like animals, which I'll show you in a moment. You can also sponsor things, but also it's a way to play these sponsor cards, which again, I'll show you in a moment. The association action over here, that was that secondary board that I showed you. That's how you kind of uh, donate to those conservation projects as well as pair up with different zoos around the world. Some of the cards that we might pull out of the deck are similar to what we saw on the association board. These are different ways that we can basically donate to conservation causes. And when you're able to achieve certain levels of things, you're gonna be able to put cubes on that, and it's going to give you a lot of those shield points, those conservation points. An additional benefit is gonna be at the bottom right over here. In this case, you're gonna get one of those knowledge points. Also, you're gonna come across those sponsor actions that we talked about. This is gonna give you some kind of a, a benefit throughout the game, maybe even when you build it as well. This particular one says, each time a primate icon is played into any zoo, you gain three of those dollars. So you keep that in front of you. Anytime any player takes one of those primate actions that has a little symbol across the top there, you're gonna get three of those dollars. And now the main event, animals. Tons and tons of animals. All right, so there's gonna be different kinds of animals and they're gonna have different prerequisites. Across the top over here, you're gonna have what the cost is. This particular one says it's gonna cost 15 credits to build. Also, you're gonna to have to have it in a level two or higher uh, pin or location. And it has to be touching water in this particular case. It's a flamingo, so that makes sense. Across the top over here, it's gonna tell you what tags it gives you. In this case, it's giving you a bird tag as well as an Africa tag. On the bottom, it's gonna tell you what it's gonna give you. In this case, it's gonna give you six of those tickets as well as some kind of a benefit. This particular one says posturing one, which means you can place one free kiosk or pavilion. Those are basically smaller buildings that you can add into your zoo. It's either gonna give you victory points or money. We've got a bird here. This is actually a petting zoo animal. This belongs in a special pen. You can have three animals fit in your petting zoo, but they have to be specific petting zoo animals. Whenever you place one of those, it doesn't give you an immediate benefit, but the more you place, the more credits you're going to get. Then we have birds. Some birds uh, are able to be put into an aviary. The secretary bird can either be placed in a level four pin or there's this large shaped tile called an aviary and it's gonna take up one of those five spaces. So if you don't have an aviary built yet, you can still put it on your board and then later on move it over. And again, it's gonna give you some points at the end of the game. Similarly, lizards have their own lizard house as well. This boa constrictor is either gonna take up a level two pin or can take up one of the locations on your reptile house once you build it. This one has a prerequisite though. Some cards will have a prerequisite that's saying you need to have two of those science tags on your cards or in your zoo before you're able to build this boa constrictor. Some cards will have any number of different requirements, like maybe you need to have other animals from the same region of the world in order to play them down. But as always, all the benefits and different things that you can do once you've built it are at the bottom of the card there. I know this is kind of a bigger game and I threw a lot at you, but again, you're just trying to build as many things as you can, put them into your zoo. You want animals, you want pins, you want to do conservation efforts, you want to have those different sponsors that you have going on, as many actions that you can have going on to synergize with one another that are gonna get you all the different points that you want. Again, this is the tricky end of the game scenario. As you're kind of building your conservation efforts, you're gonna move this along. And as you're attracting animals and people to your zoo, you're gonna move that along. Whenever those two victory point markers meet and cross over each other, that's going to trigger the end of the game. Whoever is able to kind of make the biggest gap between their two victory point markers is going to be declared the winner. I think one of the strongest aspects of this game is there's always something to do. Your turn is never wasted. You might not be able to do the most powerful action you wanted, or maybe you have to use, um, you know, a chit to be able to do it higher or rearrange or, or what have you. But I never felt like in this game did I ever have a turn where I'm like, well, I guess I can't do anything then. I always felt like I had an option. I had a route. Even if it wasn't what I was planning to do, I still could pivot and, and do something for that. And you can also just plan things things out two, three, four turns in advance. So I just, I didn't feel like there was anything, any time that I was wasting in this game. This action selection of this game is just, it's really neat. You have those five cards at the bottom of your board and you're cycling through them. Basically, whatever action you want to do, you do that at the highest strength as you're willing to kind of let it rise up and then it gets knocked down to the bottom again. So you're kind of just doing that over and over again. Um, you could just go through and do whatever is in your five spot, but a lot of times yeah. you want to be a little more strategic and you want to strategically build something or put an animal out there, or whatever the case is. So you're kind of all cycling through these actions all the time. Um, it's just made for a really smooth system and you always kind of knew ahead of time, like Bethany was saying, 
what was going to be coming up, what strength yeah. each card was going to be in the future turns, so you could plan accordingly, which was nice. Also, there's so many cards in this game, right? There's just a lot of cards in this game. It's like and a huge stack. You do. You just you <laughs> cycle through these things. You cycle. It's actually kind of easy for setup because you don't have to separate them. You just mix them all together. There's one giant stack. Yeah. One of the things that is great about this is I felt like when we were playing that all the cards were really well balanced. But depending on how much they cost, how um, the special abilities they give you, or maybe the tickets they're going to give you, I just felt like it was really well balanced, which was amazing considering how many cards there were there were so many cards but I never felt like one card was too powerful like it was balanced out by either how much it costs or or something in it I never felt like one thing was too much which is saying a lot considering there were so many cards in this game I like the scoring in this game I mentioned it before but uh, trying to balance out you know you know getting those tickets versus the conservation score and trying to get those two things to match up somewhere on the board it doesn't even matter where on the board as long as they match up and cross over each other that's the goal. So maybe you have a super high conservation uh, system going in with your particular zoo, or maybe you just have a ton of animals. You could be able to, be able to sell a lot of those tickets or whatever the case is. Uh, I just love how those st that, that scoring mechanism works. The only time I've ever seen that kind of thing work before is a game called Rahas of the Ganges, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But uh, it was really innovative and cool then, and it's just as good in this game as well. Um, I, I, I play that every time. Yeah, so this game is pretty long to play. I would say two player, it was around two hours. Yeah, that's all right. And it felt like maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> it a, was... a little exaggeration. <laughs> yes, it was but very... Uh... It was definitely a game where you were engaged the entire time you were playing it. You were invested in what was happening. You were paying attention to what was happening. And because, you know, other players are taking their turns, you're still trying to plan or read all the cards or figure out what you want to do. So, even like, you almost need a little bit more time to, to plan it out. But this was one of those games that even though it was longer, I just did not feel like it was that long because I was completely engaged while the game was happening. I was enjoying myself while the game was happening. I was strategizing while the game was happening. Just the whole time, I I just really was enjoying and focused on the game. So like, it just didn't seem like that long. Difficult, yes, but not long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this game is deceiving to me. I mean, you look at the cover, it's got these wonderful animals on it. So it's this very kind of pastoral thing going on. And it's about building these little cute little zoos, right? Uh, but man, this thing has some teeth to it. This has got some strategy. This is some some long-term planning you're going to do. Lots of symbols, lots of in, you know engine building and things that you are going to build upon each other. So this is just a, this, this is a big one. You know, this is not, yeah. uh, you know, the, the, what the theme would suggest, at least in the picture. You know, it's not just about this cute little animals. This is about the big giant business that you're yeah. running, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Uh, so I, I enjoyed that actually. It was it was a nice family theme, but with these bigger, stronger mechanisms built into it as well. Um, it reminded me a lot of like terraforming Mars. How many cards there were, and how the cards kind of all built off of each other, and had those little kind of the, the tags in them. That you know, the more science tags you had, the better. Uh, the more you know. Uh, if you had Australian animals or whatever the case was, the more you had of those, they kind of had a system behind it as well. So yeah. that reminded me of Terraforming Marvels in that way. Um, so yeah, this game just had a lot going for it. Cool scoring, a great theme, strong mechanisms, a smooth gameplay. Man, this is just a, this is a hit for our family. It's not a game we're going to be able to play all the time because of the length of it. But man, every game day where we're, you know, have a good chance to sit down. I'm going to be uh, recommending this one every time. <laughs> recommending. Let's do this one, guys. Hey, you guys, have you ever heard of Ark Nova? Oh, this just magically set itself up. Let's play this one. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.